She saw a man standing on the roadside like he was waiting for the bus. Nkem touched him and told him, Good afternoon, sir. Please, could you take my sister and I to the nearest orphanage? My mother has just passed away and we have no one to care for us. Please, sir, help my sister and I. Once upon a time, there lived a couple, Daniel and Bisola. They had been married for 12 years with two daughters, Nkem and Amanda. Nkem was 11 years old while Amanda was just six. Daniel's attitude toward his wife started changing because she gave birth to only girls. As an African man, he wished to have a male child who would replace him when he leaves the earth. When Bisola got pregnant again, Daniel was very happy. But everything changed when she came back with the news that she was carrying a female child. Daniel complained bitterly to his wife about how she always ended up giving him female children. Bisola tried to tell him that she did not have the ability to determine the gender of children. But Daniel slapped her and warned her not to talk when he was talking. Daniel's attitude towards his wife grew from bad to worse. Anything and everything she did was wrong in his sight, and he beat her at any slightest offense. Months later, Bisola had rumors that her husband had impregnated another lady, and always went to visit her place often. Bisola felt so bad, but she waited for her husband to come back so she could ask him. When Daniel came back home that evening, Bisola calmly asked Daniel, Darling, there's something bothering me. I've heard some rumors circulating about you expecting a child from another woman. Is that true? Are the rumors true? But Daniel refused to answer his wife. She kept pressuring him and kept asking him the question. Daniel got angry and asked her, Woman, I can see that you are very curious to know if I'm expecting a child from another woman. Now wait for me here. You will get answers to your question. He turned around and left the house. An hour later, and Daniel drove into his compound again with a lady. When they came down from the car, Daniel carried the lady's bag and kept pampering her. Bisola was heartbroken at the sight of her husband taking care of another lady in her presence. Tears trickled down her cheeks. The lady began to make mocking faces at Bisola. Bisola was in so much rage that she slapped the lady. Daniel, out of anger, began to beat Bisola. He gave her the beating of her life, not minding the fact that she was heavily pregnant. Their daughters, Nkem and Amanda, kept trying to stop him. Daddy, please stop. Stop hitting mom. She's all we have. Please stop. After he had beaten Bisola to his satisfaction, he left her on the floor and walked into the house with his new wife. Bisola lay on the floor crying. Nkem saw blood on the floor where her mother was lying down. She rushed to her father's room and kept knocking, calling on him to come help their mother. But a voice from inside warned her never to knock on the door again. Leave that door, Nkem. Don't knock on that door again. Nkem ran back to her mother and helped her stand up. Bisola, in the company of her two girls, walked slowly down the road to the hospital. When they got to the hospital, Bisola was taken in and the girls were left in the waiting lounge. After a while, the doctor came out and saw the two little girls crying. He couldn't bring himself to tell the girls that they had just lost their mother and unborn baby. He asked the girls what had happened to their mother and they said that it was their father who had beaten up their mother. The doctor made up his mind that he was going to file a case against the little girl's father. 
The girls asked him about their mother, and he told them that they would come back for her after seeing their father. When they arrived at Daniel's house, the doctor got scared and decided against filing a case because Daniel was a wealthy man. He walked in with the girls and met Daniel in the sitting room with his new wife. The doctor told Daniel that his wife was dead and that he should come and make the arrangements to take her to the mortuary. Then the doctor left. Nkem, who was old enough to understand what death meant, she covered her mouth and, and cried deeply. Naive Amanda was trying so hard to console her big sister. Daniel was touched. He never planned to kill his wife. He felt sorry for his daughters. He tried to go and console them. His new wife, Mirabel, tried stopping him by faking pens around her stomach and falling on the sofa. Daniel came to help her up. She told Daniel to take her into the room because the pain was too much. Daniel took her inside, forgetting his girls. And Kim and Amanda slept off in their own tears. In the morning, Mirabel came out and met Nkim and Amanda lying down on the floor. She poured a bucket of cold water on the girls. She asked Nkim to get a mop and wipe it off. When Daniel was about to come out of the room, Mirabel quickly asked the girl to go and hide so that their father wouldn't see them or else she would beat them. When he came out, he asked about his girls and Mirabel told him that they were sleeping. Daniel called his friend to confirm if Bissola's corpse were taken to the mortuary the night before. And after confirming that, he left home. After Daniel left, Mirabel called the girls and asked them their names. She told them that she was now in charge. She divided the house chores between the two girls. And Kim tried to tell Mirabel that Amanda was still little for the work she had given her. But she slapped her and warned her never to talk when she was talking. The next day, Mirabel made sure that the girls kept working without food. It was noon already and yet she hadn't given them what to eat. Amanda was so hungry and Nkem decided to get some food from the pot for her and her sister. They were still eating when Mirabel walked in. She poured the food on Nkem and shouted at her for not taking permission from her before eating. Amanda and Nkem started crying while their father's mistress left them hungry all through the day. Towards evening, when Daniel came back, Mirabel prepared food for herself and Daniel alone, leaving Nkem and Amanda to starve. Little Amanda was so hungry that she couldn't endure the hunger anymore. She rushed to the dining table where her father was eating and said to her father, Daddy, I and my sister have had nothing to eat since morning. Please, can we have some food? Daniel, on hearing this from her daughter, was surprised because she never thought Mirabel would leave his children hungry. He was not aware that his children were being mistreated in his absence. He gave his food to his girls and left the dining table in anger. Mirabel, on noticing that Daniel was angry, followed him, begging for forgiveness. The next morning, Daniel left very early without checking on his daughters. As soon as he left, Mirabel flogged both Nkim and Amanda mercilessly for making Daniel shout at her the previous night. After that, she assigned chores to them and made them work without food. That same morning, at around 10 a.m., a strange man named Stephen came knocking on their door. Mirabel came to the door and brought the man into the house. She sent and came on errands to stop her from eavesdropping into their discussion. As Nkem was about to deliver the message to Mirabel, she overheard the man who came to visit them mention the name of her father. She decided to pay attention to their conversation to hear what they were discussing. Nkem had the strange man and Mirabel planning on how to kill their father and take over his properties. 
What are you waiting for, Mirabel? You are taking too long. Poison him and let's take over the properties immediately. There's no time anymore. No, we can't do that now. If we kill him now, how then do we claim his properties? Wait until I give birth and I convince him to will all his properties to our son. After that, killing him will be a piece of cake. Then Stephen told Mirabel he knew how to kill Nkim and Amanda and no one would find out. He whispered into the ears of Mirabel. When Nkim had this, her heart started beating fast and she ran into the kitchen. That day, towards evening, after Stephen had left, Mirabel came calling out to the girls but no one answered. She thought they were sleeping and went into their room but they were not there. She searched everywhere around the house, but they were nowhere to be found. Mirabel asked the gate man about the kids, but the gate man said he hadn't seen them either. Few minutes later, a car honked outside and it was Daniel. Mirabel's heart began to beat faster. Daniel came into the house and asked Mirabel, Why do you look so restless? And where are the kids? I'm fine. It's just the pregnancy. The girls are in their room sleeping. She took Daniel into their room immediately so he wouldn't go around asking for his daughters. Mirabel was confused on what lie she was going to tell Daniel if he found that his daughters were missing. She needed to call Stephen and ask for a solution, but she can only do that the next day so Daniel wouldn't hear her conversation with him. After dinner, Daniel was so tired he lay down and slept off. In the morning, Daniel left the house and entered his car to leave for work. He remembered he had not seen his children since the previous day. So he went back into the house, straight to his children's room. And on getting there, his girls were not in their room. He asked Mirabel about his kids, but she had no answer. Out of anger, Daniel raised his hand and slapped Mirabel. She fainted. Daniel became confused. He didn't know if he was to go after his girls or take his wife to the hospital. It happened that the previous day, after Nkem overheard the conversation between Mirabel and Stephen to kill them and their father, the girl was confused and didn't know what to do. She didn't know if she should tell her father about their plans. She was not even sure her father would believe her. So she decided it was best for her and her sister to leave since Mirabel and Stephen were plotting to kill them. When Stephen had left and Mirabel was sleeping in her room, Nkem took some of her clothes and that of her sister, packed them into their school bags. Each of them carried theirs and snuck out of the building. She ran out with Amanda. They were stranded and scared with nowhere to go. She wanted to go to her mother's friend's place, but then she feared they would take them back to their father. Nkim, being a smart girl, came up with a very good plan. She saw a man standing on the roadside like he was waiting for the bus. Nkim touched him and told him, Good afternoon, sir. Please, could you take my sister and I to the nearest orphanage? My mother has just passed away and we have no one to care for us. Please, sir, help my sister and I. The man was touched when Nkem told him that their mother was dead. He wiped their tears and began to ask people around for the nearest orphanage. It was about two hours' drive. The young man was so touched that he decided to take them there himself. After a long drive, they arrived at the orphanage with Nkem and Amanda. They turned him and he waved them goodbye and left. The next day, a couple came for adoption and they saw Amanda looking so cute. They wanted to adopt Amanda. The management told them that the girls just came into the orphanage the previous day, but the couples insisted that they wanted Amanda. Nkem refused to let her sister go. We are sisters and she can't go without me. We have to go together. 